Well, it's, it's in some ways a really simple piece. Um, the two main materials are uh, glitter, green emerald glitter, um, a lot of it, uh, and lots and lots of raw eggs. And uh, the piece starts with a very formal arrangement of both of these materials. Um, I, I like to think of the arrangement like a score. There's a sense of the spacing that dictates something that's processional in, and, and that um, governs my movements. Um, it's a long piece. It's going to be six hours or just underneath six hours. And during the piece, um, I move very, very slowly and I start to work with the materials. I, break the eggs in different ways. Some of them I break, I try and break with different parts of my body. Sometimes they break by me falling on them, slipping on them, biting them. Um, the piece becomes very messy. As the eggs break, I start to, I suppose, uh, anoint myself with, with glitter, sprinkling glitter onto myself. So I begin to transform. Um, and the space begins to transform. It's on a, a large, just off-white ground, a field, uh, an area, a bit similar to a canvas in a way. And that becomes very much a sort of, in some ways, a pictorial space that goes through these different shifts and changes as I manipulate and collide with the materials. Why eggs and glitter? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, um, I'd worked with both of those materials in a completely different context, still an artistic context, but I'd worked a lot with um, chicken embryos in a science context. Um, one of the areas of art practice that I've invested a lot in is art and biology, or bioart as it's quite often called. Um, and my interest has been working with living materials, in particular cells. And uh, at one point I was particularly looking at working with cells taken from chicken embryos, very, very early stage chicken embryos. And part of that process um, was really very much me as a non-scientist coming to grappling with, with a material that we see every day, you know, in our domestic um, lives. Um, encountering that in the laboratory and as part of that process I was looking at the sort of aesthetics of the laboratory and I was trying to distress and question and skew the very clinical aesthetic of the laboratory so I was bringing in materials from other aesthetics and other artistic practices so I started using glitter um, and glittering some of these eggs that I was working with and really it was a way of kind of thinking about excess trash there's something very trashy about glitter um, also wanting to perhaps invoke some of those lineages of other artistic practice that are more to do with camp and clubs and um, so those two those two materials became something that i was working with a lot but on a very very tiny scale um, whereas this is something that i'm working with on a kind of vast scale because it's just you know hugely magnified so that's that's the kind of um, pathway of, of working with those materials. But I find a lot of my practice that I, I have these kind of uh, sideways jumps. You know, you'd be working with something for a while and then find that it seems to want to jump sideways into a completely different, different practice or area of artistic activity.
What do you, what does it mean to you to perform this piece in a sort of established museum, you know, with, with, a, with a modern collection, um, sort of a white cube environment? It's absolutely fascinating for me um, because I, when I make a piece of work, I normally try and do, um, it's almost like doing an addition. There'll be a certain number of the piece I do and then that'll be it, I'll stop. Um, and what that enables me to do by, by making the work in different contexts is, is kind of investigate it from different directions because of course the work takes on its conceptual or its rather contextual framework. Um, so this piece has been performed this year in um, defibrillator gallery in Chicago which is an artist-led gallery uh, very exciting vibrant place it's been performed at a performatorium in Regina which is um, a queer performance festival and then it's been performed in another similar sort of museum type context in Poland so each time you have different encounters with viewers a different sense of what the histories and legacies are so here at, at Foundation Beola that that's going to be very, uh, I think very, very strong. And also the other aspect that's going to be contextualized in this piece, of course, are the performances that are also happening concurrently. Um, I've visited here once before, um, I think maybe it was two years ago, and of course fell in love with this as, fell in love with the collection, fell in love with the grounds, fell in love with the, the it as a sort of architectural space. So I'm, I'm really, completely enamored by, by what this relationship is going to be tomorrow over those hours of, of the piece and this, and this framing. Do you have like a special relationship to a piece that we have in the collection or one of the artists or where do you see yourself developing? Oh goodness that's a really that's a really good question right now I, I don't I you know I, I'd love to actually just spend some time more time looking at the work and then come back to you with an answer for that question because I think that's um that's not really something I've thought about yet I think it's more a sense of um one of the things that really frustrates me sometimes with performance art is how it can be ghettoized, just away from the sort of larger histories of visual art, of fine art. Um, and I, I, I find that very frustrating. So this, just to be within this context makes sense for me, you know. So I think there are many, many connect, connections. I mean, certainly for me, um, painting isn't something I've particularly thought about a lot in terms of my work and yet with this particular piece that's what keeps on getting getting triggered because it does have this sense of moving materials in a very painterly way um, so I'll probably spend some time today wandering around and I'll come back to you with a more precise answer I think
Have you worked with Marina before? I have, yes, I've been very fortunate too. Um, I first worked with Marina when she was curating um, a similar sort of context, uh, uh, concept actually that was called Marina Abramovich Presents and it was part of Manchester International Festival, which I think was 2009. And she and uh, Maria Bolshaw at the Whitworth um, Gallery in Manchester curated, I think there might have been 14 of us, to perform for four hours a day over 17 days. So again, a museum context, a museum that had a collection, um, very extraordinary to have the sort of privilege of being given time, time to allow work to unfurl and then to be t able to return to that on a daily basis. So that was the first time and then the second time was um, performing in The Life and Death of Marina Abramovich, directed by uh, Robert Wilson. So uh, that toured for a while, so I was part of all of those shows and rehearsals.